Hey there fellow creators, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios, and the other day I was thinking, you know, the artistic process is kind of weird for people. It's like, hey, this thing and these artists do this stuff, and I don't really understand it, and it's, it's a process, and whatever, but it's actually kind of funny because the scientific process and the artistic process are kind of the same. Stick around. Now when I say the scientific process, I'm kind of talking about the thing that I think everybody kind of learned in school, and that was the scientific method. A series of steps that kind of lead you through observation and experiment and how to kind of do the science, basically. And art is really kind of similar in that way. Now since the last time I sat in a science classroom, apparently the scientific method has changed a little bit. It used to be like six steps, and now it's like seven, eight, nine, people throw in weird little sub-steps in them, and it's like this weird flow chart now. Kind of confusing. I'm going to kind of kick it back a little bit and just focus on the original six steps that I sort of remember. So for the course of this video, in this version of the scientific method, we're going to focus on observation, forming a hypothesis, testing or experimenting, analyzing your data, drawing a conclusion, and repeating. So for the artistic scientific method today, we're going to be looking at two different varieties of it. One, for your artwork, and two, for finding and developing new techniques. So for your artwork, it starts with the observing phase, which is studies, sketches, searching for ideas, brainstorming, all that fun stuff. The hypothesis is your thumbnail sketching phase, or my thumbnail sketching phase, whatever it happens to be. The, okay, I've done a whole lot of preliminary sketches, now it's time to actually figure out what my idea is. So, okay, let's hammer it down, let's figure out what the composition is and what kind of size and medium we're talking about. Now the test or experiment phase is probably what you're expecting it to be. It's actually doing the work, doing the painting, drawing, or sculpture that you've kind of set up to do. Next up, you have the analysis phase. At this point, your project is done, you're kind of looking back over it and you're like, okay, what worked, what didn't, what did you do successfully, and what didn't you do successfully? What would you change next time? When you draw your conclusion, after kind of looking at the piece overall, it's really a matter of, was this piece successful? Yes, no, and what do you do about it? And when it comes to the repeat stage, because, well, in science, if you can't repeat an experiment, then it's not science. If you can't learn from your mistakes, if you can't build on that project and take it to the next project, then it's not really the artistic process either. I've come to call this sort of building on projects and, and taking the ideas to the next level project-based learning. And that concept of project-based learning is actually kind of what I built my book on. Now, if your artistic process does not involve actually making art, I mean, it does, I'm sure, at some point, but this particular use of the scientific method for your artistic process, if it's about developing techniques, this is where things kind of get a little more interesting and actually a little bit closer to that original scientific method. So let's start simple again. Observe. Observe what? Well, a style, a technique, a piece of art that you're in, that kind of catches your attention, and you say, that's cool, I want to try that. Next up would be the hypothesis. Uh, you're going to research stuff here. You're going to look at materials. What materials did that artist use, or, or what materials do I want to use to replicate that process, or that different style, or, or technique, or element in that in that painting or drawing, how can I how can I replicate that? So research your materials, research the artist, research as much as you can before you start tackling that project. Then test it. Uh, try it out on a uh, piece that you're working on, a side project, just something to just say like, okay, let's see if this technique works. If you're confident, use it on a painting that you're working on or drawing. If you're not as confident, feel free to grab some sort of a scrap. Now, while you're still testing, you can actually begin the analysis phase. You can say, okay, what's working, what's not working, why is this looking perhaps different than the way that artist did it? Uh, sometimes it's just a different skill set, maybe, hey, they were using a stiff brush, I was using a soft one. Oh, that's the difference. After your analysis of the technique, you can start to look at, okay, how can I actually use this in my work on a more regular basis, or if you even can? I think for a lot of developing techniques and finding new techniques, at least through the course of the ones that I've kind of come up with, it's always been, how can I change this a little bit and adapt it and really kind of make it work in my workflow? And then, of course, repeat. Do it again. Do it a lot. Build on it and make it your own. So, much like the scientific method, art is a process, and it's one that actually can be understood. 
What are your thoughts on this? Have you ever compared the artistic process to perhaps another type of process or another type of uh, field or anything like that? If you haven't, uh, let me know your thoughts and comments below on how this video maybe has opened your eyes a little bit in terms of how to approach different projects. And as always, be sure to like, subscribe, follow on Facebook, DeviantArt, Instagram, or just go to my website for my new art. And this has been Cinderblock Studios, and I'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, thanks for checking this video out. I wanted to take this opportunity to tell you about a little side project I decided to just finally start working on. Uh, so, for those not familiar, I actually, every now and then I go on Twitch and I stream games because apparently that's a popular thing to do. Um, and uh, I started kind of doing it a couple months ago and I was like, you know what, I actually really, really enjoy this. Uh, it's sort of just a fun little thing to do on the side and everything like that. Um, and I've been kind of been using the Cinderblock Studios name for that, but I want to kind of shift that a little bit and try and get those, those videos to a sort of a separate account. So, starting this summer, uh, every Wednesday, I will be streaming over on Twitch and uploading those videos to a new tertiary channel uh, called Cinderblock Plays. Uh, I will be uh, kind of focusing all those videos over there, uh, so if you are at all interested in that, uh, check, check me out, uh, Cinderblock Studios on Twitch, and uh, the link in the description box below uh, for that new channel. Uh, you don't necessarily have to subscribe yet, but if you want to, it's there. I won't be officially uploading or launching any videos there until June 19th. Uh, so keep, uh, keep an eye out for that stuff. Uh, announcements and everything like that will be on Twitter and the Twitch channel um, and everything like that. So that should be fun. Uh, so again, guys, thanks for checking out this art video. If you're interested in sort of my weird gaming sort of side hobbies and stuff like that, feel free to check that stuff out as well.